what's up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel and uh, by now i'm sure you've seen the thumbnail you've seen the title of the video and you already know what time it is it is time to get active so on today's video i want to talk about how to increase your chances of being hired as a software developer so the way i look at software development is like an art we have so many um, disciplines in software development which you can choose to go into so if you're looking at uh, joining software development as a career then i think this is a video for you and also if you're in software development and also looking at how you can be able to get employment i also think this video will be able to help you so I've, uh, as i've stated software development is i look at it as an art and the way we have different uh, forms of art is the same way we have uh, different diverse uh, uh, disciplines and uh, uh, our, our ways of uh, uh, doing software development. So for example, you can have people who go into uh, front-end development, you can have people who go into machine learning, you can have people who go to uh, back-end development and such sort of things. So on this video, I'm going to be talking about um, if you want to get employed, how you'll be able to increase your chances. So I've been uh, privileged in the past five years to uh, have attended so many interviews and also have uh, conducted some interviews. And so I know what the hiring firm or the, the hiring managers look for when they are looking for a technical software developer. So software being an art, um, this means basically that for you to be considered as somebody who understands what they are doing, especially for a person who doesn't know you, uh, in this uh, I'm talking the perspective of when you have gone for an interview or when you're submitting your CV, the manager of the person you're sending the CV to, they do not know you. So they do not know your capabilities. So as a software developer who is looking at getting employed, you must be able to show the work that you have done. So this leads me to my first point. So you must be able to display your portfolio. By portfolio, I mean you must be able to show some of your most successful projects or sophisticated projects that when a new person looks at, they'll be able to judge your work based on whatever you have presented. So there are different ways of uh, presenting your work and uh, the one that I will recommend is for you to have our portfolio website. So basically you can just create a website where you put your contact information, you put your, your work. Somebody can be able to, if you are developing Android applications, if I come to your site, I can be able to see sorry, what you have done previously. So I can be able to judge you based on what you've been able to accomplish. So most software developers don't uh, really uh, have a display of whatever they have been able to achieve. And I think this is one of the factors that you are maybe not being called for an interview. You can have a perfect CV, but if you do not include on that CV the work that you have been able to do, then your chances of getting uh, hired are a bit low compared to a person who includes their work. My second point is, you must be very knowledgeable in your field of specialization. Say for example, you are a back-end developer who uses .NET Framework. So when you go for an interview, you must at least be able to know the current affairs of uh, how the .NET Framework is evolving, what are the latest versions, and what are the changes that are to come in the future. So by this I also mean that you must really uh, understand in detail um, whatever you have decided to specialize in. So you must know the latest technologies, uh, what is evolving, um, and uh, basically how to apply that in real life. So most of the interviews you might end up being given uh, a situation or a uh, uh, a, a, an example of a, of a problem that you might need to solve um, using your programming uh, skills. So now if you do not understand how to properly apply whatever you have, the knowledge you have which is theoretical, to 
the real life uh, situation, then that might become a problem. So basically, in case you find yourself being called for an interview, make sure that you totally understand the, the current affairs revolving about the, uh, around the area that you've decided to specialize in. So if it's if it's if you're doing machine learning, be able to know the tools and and the frameworks and the languages that that are being used and the examples of even how um, some problems have been solved using those specific tools. My third point um, is about uh, when you're being called for a technical interview, learn how to write pseudocodes and also how to quickly code in your preferred language. So most interviews, for example, they will give you a problem. Uh, most of it revolves up around um, a, a specific um, topic like, like data structures and algorithms. We will be given a problem and using pseudo codes, you will be able to solve that problem out. So you must be able to understand how to write um, those pseudo codes and most interviews also use uh, languages like Python so you might also need to kind of understand how Python works not necessarily use it but at least have an understanding of how it works because um, what I have uh, come to realize is Python is very easy to use especially when you are doing interviews and of course most of the hiring managers they will give you an option on uh, what you want to use, what you're most comfortable with, unless now the role is specific for a specific programming language, otherwise most of them will give you an option. And most um, applicants uh, usually go with Python because it's very easy to use, very easy to debug, and you don't need to write a lot of lines to achieve a specific goal. So when it comes to things like uh, uh, going for technical interviews, you must at least be able to go through some of the most common questions that are being asked and be in a position to solve most of those questions, which most of them, as I've mentioned, they revolve around uh, data structures and algorithms. So if you're able to write or sort data or um, basically do things like binary searches and things like that, then uh, you should be able to practice and um, when you go for these interviews you'll be a bit more confident and uh, you'll be in a better position of getting the job. So as I've stated, the first thing is you must have a portfolio that will get you the, the interview. Then you must be able to understand the area that that is being interviewed for that specific field, be able to know the roles, responsibilities, and be able to have a deeper understanding of the technologies and things like that, then usually you have two interviews. The first one is general, just asking you questions about yourself, about what you've done, about uh, the, the role, the company, and things like that. Then now the technical interview, that's when you need now to, to be more prepared uh, when it comes to coding and be able to solve specific uh, problems when you're given. Uh, my last point is also on, on interviews still. There are so many ways you can be able to practice uh, attending interviews. There are some sites that give you free interviews and actually they connect you with a technical person and they'll be able to give you technical questions to be able to answer so that when you have an interview, you'll at least have an idea of how it feels. You'll be familiar with the whole environment. So some of those websites, actually, I'm going to leave the link on the comments. You can be able to go and check them out and also be able to try out some of the interviews there. And uh, if you have colleagues who are also developers, you can also engage them to help you with the interview preparation phase, basically asking you uh, technical questions and you being able to respond to them and this will give you a feeling of how the interview is supposed to go so when you go to the interview and get to the real interview you will at 
at least have an idea of what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do to do it. So you just get yourself familiar with these things. You can also Google uh, some pro uh, programming pro problems that you can try solving. And most of uh, the sites that are available online, you can also be able to uh, give your answer and it will also show you whether it's correct or not. So um, what I've also realized is it's not always about solving the problem. You might be able to write a code that will solve the problem, but how efficient is your code? So you also need to look at how to make your code efficient. You can be given a problem and solve it, but you use like 20 lines of code. Another person can be given the, the same problem and they use 10. Then there is also things like um, the execution time. There is a way that that is calculated. There is something that is called uh, big O notation. You should look at that. Just Google that. And these are some of the things that you, you, you need to like get used to if especially you're looking at uh, getting hired um, by the big companies like Google, Amazon, these are things they look for. So you can be able to solve a problem, but how uh, efficient is your solution? So you should also consider that when you're learning coding, how to use loops, um, which loops are better for solving which problems, and things like uh, sorting lists and and, and so many other uh, data manipulation uh, methods that you need to learn and also need to know which ones work best for a certain uh, position or uh, problem and which ones don't. So these are some of the things that I, I personally think that they ask and um, um, if, you, if you are able to master all this then you, you will be able to be to, to at least get a job somewhere and that, that that's just uh, my honest opinion from what i've been able to observe and what i have experienced personally so yeah i'll be making more videos about uh, things like this so yeah these are things that i have observed personally and i think if you do these things you'll be in a more better position to get uh, hired as a software developer so if you have any question if you have a comment you can leave it down below and i'll be able to respond to you and i'll also attach uh, links to the sites that i think are useful for you as uh, you continue growing as a software developer thank you so much for watching this video uh, see you in the next video